Afghans who worked with the United States or the International Security Assistance Force at some point since 2001 are facing acute fears of persecution or retribution that will likely grow as coalition forces leave the country. We have a special re responsibility to these individuals. They stood with us. We will stand with them. America's longest war is drawing to a close, but as U.S. troops head home, the Taliban is advancing across Afghanistan, assassinating government officials, taking control of key cities, and the U.S. Embassy is now urging all Americans to leave the country as interpreters and other Afghan citizens who help the U.S. fear for their lives. Can they be saved? Are we meeting our moral responsibility to American allies? We begin with senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel, who's covered the war for more than a decade. Since America's deal with the Taliban to withdraw, the extremists have gone on the offensive, now controlling more than half the country's 400 districts. Civilian casualties are at record highs, and hundreds of thousands are being forced from their homes. This week, Joe Biden creating a new program to help more Afghans escape the violence. Now, those who work for some American organizations can also apply for refugee status, but against the odds, they'll have to make their own way out of the country first. Meanwhile, the first interpreters and others are already arriving in the U.S. Two and a half thousand will be evacuated from the country in the coming days. Another 4,000 plus families likely relocated to safe locations overseas for now. The extremists targeting anyone they don't approve of, journalists in particular, although now some who've worked with the U.S. media may be eligible to apply for refugee status. But for some, it's too late. On Friday, the head of the Afghan media center was killed. And it's not just political or media figures, even a comedian and just this week, a historian and poet targeted. Few seem safe in Afghanistan anymore. George, the Taliban advance has been nothing short of staggering. And the fear is that after US troops complete their withdrawal in just over three weeks time, it'll only get worse. And I have to say, in 20 years of covering this war, I've never seen the situation on the ground look so bleak. George? Ian Panel, thanks. Let's talk about this now with Ryan Crocker, who served US, as U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan during the war, and Jana Shinwari, former Afghan interpreter for the U.S. for over eight years, credited with saving at least five American lives and co-founder of No One Left Behind. Ambassador Crocker, let me begin with you. We've seen just today the Taliban taking control of two more key cities. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? A prolonged civil war is a more likely outcome, frankly, George, than a, a swift Taliban takeover of the entire country. They're being very smart about this. They are uh, not launching major strikes into Kabul. They are doing what they're doing in part to uh, create a climate of fear and panic. And they are succeeding wonderfully at this. Creating a climate of fear and panic, Jana Shinwari, what does that mean? for those left behind, particularly those interpreters, translators, others who helped America during this war. All right, um, as we said before, it's already too late uh, if we do not evacuate all those interpreters who are left behind and the Taliban will kill everybody and they will torture them in front of their family and kill them. Um, I just heard a couple news that uh, when the Taliban, they controlled a couple cities, they were going and knocking door by door and asking for those people who were supporting the U.S. mission in Afghanistan and they were trying to kill them. And uh, yeah, it's already too late. But we have to do and evacuate those people before it's too late. And uh, as I said before, the Taliban are now like much powerful and, and, and controlling a lot of cities. And these people are not safe anymore in Afghanistan. The withdrawal has begun. The evacuation has begun, Ambassador Crocker. But you say this is an all-hands-on-deck moment. It must be a presidential priority. What does that mean in practice? What must be done right now? What needs to be done right now is to ramp up the evacuation, get more flights in faster. Uh, we are at a moment of crisis. The problem, um, the Taliban now control the narrative. Uh, they can certainly shut down Kabul airport, choose. Uh, one place where it is not good to be right now 
the situation we've put ourselves in. Taliban have the weight, they've got the options, they've got the leverage the capability. We've given all that away. So ability to get our folks out and others who've served us at risk of their life out. It really now depends whether the Taliban want to let them go. John Ishinori, how do we break through the red tape right now? How do we speed up the evacuations? All right. <clears throat> we, uh, we have to ask President Biden to, to, to uh, start more flights, and uh, we cannot wait. Since uh, President Biden announced the uh, withdrawal of U.S. Uh, troops from Afghanistan, and this process has been too slow, and I've been in contact with uh, a lot of people in Afghanistan, uh, that they're waiting for their visa. Some of them, they, they, they even de, did not uh, receive their approval for SIV program. It means that this program is very slow so far. And uh, <clears throat> we should expedite this program. We should uh, like have more planes to, to uh, evacuate these people as soon as possible. Janice Shomari, what is the prolonged civil war that Ambassador Crocker uh, fears is likely? What does that mean? for Afghanistan and for those left behind? Uh, as I explained before, um, uh, the, the Taliban, they're killing everybody. If they control the Afghanistan, uh, they will not only kill the, the interpreters, but they will kill uh, their immediate families who are still in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan will go back to, to 20 years uh, or 21 years ago. No schools, nothing, no job. And uh, since uh, this evacuation, the U.S. withdrawal happened, uh, you guys know that uh, 10 thousands of people lost their jobs. And, and if the Taliban take over, they will kill all these people, uh, including the news reporters, uh, uh, everybody who was working for the U uh, Afghan government or U.S. government. They're not safe. They will kill everybody. And, and, and yeah. That, that's, that's what it will happen. Ambassador Crocker, can you imagine any circumstances that will force the United States to go back in with ground troops? I, I cannot, uh, George. Uh, uh, President Biden has made that clear. Uh, we're going out and are staying out. Uh, it is has now taken complete ownership of President Trump's uh, basically policy in Afghanistan. He owns it, and I think it is already an indelible stain on his presidency. What a tragic situation. Uh, Ambassador Crocker, Janice Shinwari, thanks very much for your time and your information this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.